Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Nathan. Um, and thank you so much to Leah and Nick for, for having me as the moderator. It's, it's truly such an honor. Um, uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I am a composer, writer, and performer um, uh, from Chicago. Uh, and I will be asking some questions of Leah and Nick tonight. Um, and then we'll open it up for sort of more of a dialogue and, and um, community questions or just sort of a broader conversation. Um, uh, I've also prepared a lightning round of questions for Leah and Nick. Um, so I have a bell here. Um, and we will jump into the lightning round uh, at some point in the future, um, in the next 30 minutes. So I have a random number generator on my phone. <laughs> I'm gonna, so five minutes from now, we'll go into the lightning round. Um, I'm setting an alarm for five minutes. Um, uh, and here that goes, so that's just going. Um, to start us off, I'd like to ask uh, Leah and Nick to sort of just walk us through the exhibition. Um, for those of us that haven't gone, um, or those of us that have, but maybe it's been a week or two, um, to just sort of like talk us through what's the work in the gallery itself. Yeah. Do you want to go ahead and screen share? Sure. Um, so there are, there are five videos in the exhibition, and four of them are available uh, in full on the Roman Susan website. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to let y'all just look at those if you, if you want to, maybe we, we can, we'll reference them in this talk probably, but, um, I'm going to share my screen and show some images of the objects that are in the gallery. Um, um yeah, while you're, while she's doing that too, um, the videos very simply, like one is of us sewing our pajamas together. One is of us eating a loaf of bread together, like, you know, like no hands. Um, one is the one you can see here of Leah lying on the couch with balloons tied to her. Um, you can, yeah. Yeah, the bread, the bread one. Did oh yeah, and one is one of us uh, kneading uh, deflated balloons into uh, dough, um, into a loaf of bread. Um, and then the final one is one of us alternating between slow dancing, a video of us from the knees down, uh, alternating with us sweeping each other's feet. Uh, that one is not on the website, but that is, that's like the Easter egg if you go to the, <laughs> to the gallery in person. Um, so for those of you who've been to Roman Susan, this is the gallery. Um, and everything that, all the objects that are in the gallery are kind of like a performance ephemera plus. Uh, so here, I don't, can you see my cursor? Is that a thing? Yes, I can. Cool. If you can, probably other people can. <laughs> uh, here are the, the pajamas that we sew together in one of the videos. Um, we made that into a kind of sculpture and we're ha they're hanging here. Uh, there's some balloon sculptures. There's better images of that coming up. Um, where is the hall? How do I move along? Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, these are loaves of bread, which are uh, cut in half and then combined in different ways. Uh, these are half loaves of bread tied to, tied to balloons. Um, maybe we'll talk about, a little bit more about that later, but it's, it's kind of like a beyond the bread video is this object. Um, how do I move the right direction? Oh, and then many loaves of bread. So that's what's uh, that's what's in the gallery. And then here, uh, there's a kind of a sculpture of balloons. Balloons both ways. Balloons both ways <laughs> is now what that sculpture is named. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's that's what's in the gallery. So just to give you a little little idea of for like... those of you who haven't seen it. Yeah, and and as like a little like moderator note, I highly recommend checking out the videos. They're the really remarkable um, uh, stuff that like like really like sits with you. It's wild. Um, check it out on the website. The videos are definitely the the meat of the thing. We're both yeah. performers mostly, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And we could, I mean, we could show like a one minute clip of the, of one of the videos, if that's helpful, if people are interested, we could also yeah. do that later if people are really curious and haven't seen it. Yeah, um, maybe it's maybe it's a good idea to start with um, sort of like a little bit of a conversation about um, the materials themselves. I'm, I'm curious about bread, which is like um, so much of a through line of, of all of the work. How did bread enter into, into, your, into your lives? into the work. Um, where, where is bread for you? Uh, yeah, so I mean, I guess as like an orientation for the piece, some of you may know this, um, you know, the piece is really about thinking about intimacy and thinking about alienation and these measures of distance as like intimacy and alienation as like a simultaneous series of performances and like how do we navigate these distances between each other? How do we navigate these different kind of like emotional frameworks or social frameworks? Um, so the bread piece was actually made two years ago. It's the only part of the work that was made like pre-COVID. Um, All right, we've got lightning round. Uh, Nick, in the description of the show, you write about alternative intimacies. If you had just given birth to Leah, what alternative name would you give her? Um, uh, Jasper. All right, for Leah, pajamas feature prominently in the window of Roman Susan. If Nick were to transform into an object as they climb into bed, what object would they transform into? Uh, a very round, fuzzy teapot. For Nick, uh, what does Leah's voice sound like inside of Leah's head? Uh, like, like muffled purple honey. For Leah, Nick has a beard. What other body hair does Nick have? Uh, head hair, uh, a little bit of hair right on the tip of the nose, uh, pubic hair, a tiny bit of chest hair, leg hair, uh, toe hair. For Nick, uh, you describe ambiguous distances in the show. Please ambiguously describe Leah for us. Um, Leah is, she's around. Uh, she's that one. I'll take that. Uh, for Leah, name three ways to mispronounce Nick's last name. Mari how? Miri Hiu. Mm -hmm. For Nick, uh, I've excerpted the first line from Leah's bio. Please fill in the blanks. Leah Cole is a cellist and multidisciplinary artist, blank, blank, blank. And so sick. <laughs> no. <laughs> Based in Chicago. For Leah, look at the camera the way that Nick would look at the camera if they were angry at me right now. Oh no. For Nick, uh, you and Leah both had COVID at the same time and you watched all of the Harry Potter movies. Where does Harry go to teach Dumbledore's army? Oh, the room of requirement. For Leah, in two words or less, is knowing another truly possible? Often, yes. All right, that's our lightning round. Thank you so much for playing. Um, we were just talking about uh, the bread piece. So can you tell me about, specific, like this is the, uh, you two are facing each other in the video. You have a loaf of bread between your mouths and you're taking, uh, al you're alternating between taking bites out of it. Um, tell me more. Yeah, so this was like an image that was really kind of collaboratively intuited a couple of years ago. Um, and I think, Corey, this is something that, that we talked about a little bit uh, the other day, but we have been performing this piece called uh, Tape Piece. And the performance, it's a performance by our friends Andy Ingemels and Maya Verloc. And it asks the performers to tape each other together, first with scotch tape and then break apart, then with masking tape and then break apart, and then with duct tape and then break apart. And it requires this kind of cooperation. There is a closeness, there is an intimacy, there's also like a kind of violence almost like it's it's really you're on the same team but the thing that you're doing is not romantic um it's difficult and it's taxing and sometimes it hurts and it's it's a really kind of complex intimate space um so this was kind of like a headspace that i think we were in around that time that that image was like intuited as this show developed i think the bread became you know thinking about like sharing a meal as like a kind of intimacy, like a non-sexual, like a non-romantic in intimacy. Um, 
or if it's romantic or sexual, like there certainly aren't like necessarily the primary or like necessary components of sharing a meal. Um, so bread kind of becomes us eating this bread together is like, we are sharing a meal. It doesn't look like a normal meal that would be shared. Uh, it's really intense. It's not a super enjoyable experience, right? Um, so it's really about like recontextualizing this like kind of very simple um, object, the loaf of bread, uh, this simple act of sharing a meal in like a new, I guess that's where the language of like alternative intimacy kind of comes in. Mm -hmm. I think the simplicity that you're talking about is really important too. Like bread as a metaphor or a, or a what's the synecdoche uh, for, uh, yeah, for meals in general, for sustenance. Um, that's kind of a simplistic way of talking about it, but, it, but I do think that there's a kind of like, we all need this thing and bread is a representat representation of that thing. Uh, I was reading Sister Outsider uh, earlier this in, in the Inside Times. And the first essay that, that Audre Lorde uh, puts in that book is, a, is an essay about her being in, in the USSR. And she keeps talking about how they're not worried about having bread. And I kept being like, why is she talking about bread so much? And then I realized, oh, she's just talking about like, they're not worried about their basic needs. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think it's, there's also this kind of like bread as, bread as basic need between two people. M metaphor, synecdoche. Synecdoche. <laughs> <laughs> what does the like, because um, all of the, am I correct in this? All of the loaves of bread in the gallery themselves have been split down the middle. Um, what does like, um, like where did that come from? The like, to divide the bread in half? Hi, Colleen. Um, Hi. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> Uh, I think, I think it is like maybe important to note just at the outset that a lot of the show was like really intuited. Um, there was a lot of kind of like free, bright, rambled dream space. Like, what about the, what about that? What about that? And that was one of the first sculptures that we thought of. I think in the show too, like there's, there's a lot of like kind of movement towards or suggestion of another, right? Like, um, the balloons are maybe the suggestion of a celebration or a social gathering that is not present in the work. Um, the bread is maybe like the whole loaf is like a suggestion of a meal that is like not being shared in any way that we see in the work. I think like the half loaf of bread like strongly implies or like moves towards the other half of the loaf of bread, but its absence is felt. Um, I don't know if that sufficiently answers your question. Um, but that's that's no it absolutely does I mean I, I like I and this is something that I something that I like so appreciate about oh god it's I mean it's not even like you two as artists but you two as people um uh is the like is the kind of like love and affection for the world that you bring that I like so appreciate um and like that like having two loaves of bread that that don't belong together, like push together as if they like were the same loaf. Um, like, I, like I find that just like so impossibly sweet um, uh, that I like didn't realize that I would be moved by, um, <laughs> by half loaves of bread. Um, does the like, a, a thing that I, I sort of want to ask about is, um, is like eroticism um, in the work. Because um, there is, uh, especially in, in that initial piece um, with, with the bread between you two, um, there's something like very, um, something very erotic about it to me. Um, uh, in that um, like, like using your mouth to like, to try to like accomplish something, it like, it feels, um, it feels very, very intimate and sort of like, like a little inappropriate um, uh, to observe. Um, but then you're like, oh, this is, we're just like looking at two people eating bread. I don't know. Um, and th that's something I also really admire in the work is like that it, it manages to be erotic without being sexy per se. Um, I'm curious if you, if you two have any thoughts about that, about like eroticism uh, in, 
in making it. It's interesting that you say that because when we were installing the show, there was a event going on at the cafe next door. Uh, and this, this guy tapped on the glass and he pointed at that video and he said, that's a little bit much, don't you think? <laughs> uh, I think Nick and Nick went and talked talk to them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that there's, for me, there's something uh, er erotic may maybe about vul that kind of vulnerability. Like we, we have such a clear task that we're trying to do together and there, and it's so, it's so clear what we're doing. There's something for me, there's something vulnerable about that. Like, here's my work. Look, look at it. Like, look at me doing it well and trying to figure it out. And all of that stuff is so available. Mm. So, yeah, I, I think for me that the eroticism of that comes from that kind of vulnerability, maybe. Mm. Um, I don't know, what do you think about it? Yeah, it's funny. It didn't even occur to me that this video could be interpreted as erotic until this dude said that's a bit much and like, <laughs> which is maybe, you know, maybe an oversight on, on, on my part. The piece is so not sexy. The experience of performing that was not sexy. Mm -hmm. The experiment, the experience of like performing really anything in the piece was kind of taxing and uh, <laughs> clumsy. And yeah. there's something about proximity in it for sure. Like in, in, all of the videos that we're performing together were very close to each other, right? And we're trying to navigate some sort of task very close to each other. And yeah, that like, there's a lot of like bodies hitting each other, you know, or like bodies interacting in like a really close way. It feels, feels to me like a very embodied work, but like, yeah, again, erotic wasn't like a thing that for me at least, like I was like, I was going for. Um, hmm. It wasn't like a framework that I was super thinking about, I guess. Again, not to say that it's not present in the work at all, but there is there there is something definitely in the pajama piece, you know, like we're sitting on our our bed and sewing these pajamas together, and then we get in bed like that's a very it's a very intimate sort of romantic thing in a way. Hmm. Um, but there was something interesting about performing that piece and being like, I'm so comfortable with this person's body. And I, I have a task to do next to them. Mm. And, and having those things kind of collide throughout, the, throughout that video is, is interesting to me, mm. the, the, throughout the performance. Mm. Mm. Do you like, um, and like a, another sort of thread inside of this, um, that, that it's not, it's like proximate to eroticism, but, but not the same. Um, is is gender inside of the work? Because um, there are like um, uh, I, I'm thinking about sort of like an art historical uh, uh, approach of like um, uh, of of people who are dating making work together, um, and the sort of like yin and yang, like Marina Nule, or even like. Um, uh, Felix Gonzalez Torres and like perfect lovers of like two clocks in sync. Um, but, but those, um, those works feel different, um, to me than, than the, than the show at Roman Susan. Um, and I, um, as I was thinking through it, I, I feel like it might have to do with gender and I, I don't know entirely. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> do you like, do you have thoughts about that? Do you like what, what does it mean to put put like two bodies as us like next to each other? Does that like does gender suddenly become like a a, a spectrum there? Wow, that's such an interesting question. Um, you know, there definitely were conversations that we had about specific things, right? Um, identifies non-binary for those who don't know. And, and uh, like the, the pajamas for a second, like we ordered some pajamas, it felt weird. It felt like it was like this, these are not the pajamas. Like, and then we just had these two robes. Like we were thinking about the presentation in that video in particular, you know, I think maybe there's a thing about, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think like in that piece in particular, there's like a mundaneness, there's like a comfort, there's like an us being ourselves in a specific way with each other, you know, we're not performing in front of an audience. And maybe that allows like the specific gender dynamics of our relationship to speak in a certain way. Maybe that like shimmers or resonates or something. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think like in all of this, um, you know, if there was a specific orientation towards gender in the making of the work, it really had to do with like, okay, we're making video pieces that strangers are going to see as they walk from the train. And like, how can we create a thing where like we feel vulnerable and seen and as ourselves in our relationship in this, in this context, you know, um, or how can we make the intimacy speak, um, you know, and I don't know that that, I don't think that that has necessarily to do with like a, like a gender relation in the abstract, so much as it has to do with maybe gender dynamics in our relationships mm -hmm. as, as collaborators and as, um, as partners. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so much of the like, this is, uh, uh, this is, this is my chance to be a little bit much, so much of it like, reminds me personally of the of the first time that I was fucked in the ass um of like the sort of like um the like like the transcendence of of like a queer experience um uh where I was like oh I can see I like like there's all of these like rainbow colors that like come out of my eyes and I can like see the world differently um uh, yeah. But it was only through like an intimate um, relationship with another person um, that I was able to see that. Um, mm -hmm. And it was like, and it was like gross and like body and um, like all of the, all of the disgust of like eating half a loaf of bread <laughs> in 20 <laughs> minutes. Um, uh, but also like all this like very transcendent sort of like seeing the self, seeing another feeling. Yeah. Cause it's, it's all, it's all there. It is gross and it's intense and there's like dynamics that are at play that are complicated. It's not, I think if anything, like this piece is not like a romantic, like, uh, oh, we're so, it, look at this beautiful intimacy. Like that's not, that's not the intention. It's like, look at this thing that is all of these things moving in all of these directions simultaneously. And like, what does it mean for those to overlap and run into each other? and be like a mess or a tangle. Mm. You know? mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. what's the actual experience of encountering another person on that level? Cause it's, it's many things. Mm. I will also say that in, you asked earlier about putting the two loaves of bread together and there, there is a kind of a, a nod at bi binary-ness. <laughs> you know, there's two, there's two halves. Um, there are two balloons. There's there's a balloon above and there's a balloon below. But I, I do remember thinking about breaking that open just slightly. Like, mm -hmm. yes, there, there have to be two halves, but we can combine them in all different ways. And yeah, it is, it's critical that there are like different, that there are many different loaves of bread in the, in the room. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't mean to get inspirational postery about that. Like that, <laughs> that's also not the intention. But... <laughs> But it does, yeah, it does feel important to the, to the, to the complexity of it. Okay, I have one last question and then I think we should open it up to, to, our, to our audience. Um, and it's this like, this thing that you told me about um, that I just like haven't stopped thinking about, which is that like the, that the gallery itself is, is, is performing sort of a, a durational performance where the balloons very slowly run out of air and drop to the ground. <laughs> um, and that Leah has to bike up to Rogers Park and fix that. Um, which I just like, I, oh God, I love this. Um, um, I'm curious about time. I'm curious about like long duration um, and like how, um, I don't know, how you, how you feel about that in the work. Like, uh, how are you feeling about the balloons dropping? Slightly stressed. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a really odd sensation. 
as two people who mostly perf like perform in time and, and usually in short times, you know, like an evening and then we get feedback from an audience. <laughs> uh, it was a really weird experience to put up this show and be like, now the performance has begun. Like now it's, it's just there. I'm in Rogers Park all the time, performing <laughs> all the time. Uh, it's exciting. Do you think that it, do you think that it changes things? The the amount of time you mean? The, uh, yeah, or like or the the fact that I might walk by and that the balloon might be in the process of falling, or have fallen. <laughs> I think. No, 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 no. You. Well, it is. If you walk by right now, the balloon is in the process of falling. <laughs> that is happening right now. Um, uh, I think for me, there's something comforting about it. I thought we were making a video and sculpture piece, um, like a gallery show that was going to be kind of static. And then we left and I was like, oh, actually, this is a performance piece that is like told through these objects. And that feels nice. It feels good to me. I like, I mean, I haven't had to bike up to Rogers Park. Lee has been very gracious and like biked up and fixed the balloons. But I like that. I like that there's motion in it. I like that it's moving. I think that. Um, I think that imagining this as like a slow, like a large temporal unit that we're working with is really interesting. I think thinking the gallery as like a stage, like. People come, I imagine, and like look through the window and see the videos and they're interacting with the work in a performative way. Like there's a performance happening that they're engaging with and they're being affected by. And I think conceiving of it as this kind of like really long form with like highlights, you know, and like things change over time. It like yields kind of like a dynam dynamicism that also does feel like present in the work already outside of this kind of context conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we've 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 done our best to keep the balloons off the floor, you know, <laughs> that's the intention. Uh, but there is there is definitely something attractive to me about. It. Actually, Nathan sent images, uh, took documentation the first weekend, and the balloons had already hit the deck, and like <laughs> this was not how it was when we left it. And I'm like still kind of in love with these images. Like I think there's something so powerful about them to me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not bothered by these kind of, by this ebb and flow at all. I think it enhances the work for me. Um, Nick keeps saying for me because <laughs> I think I have more of a feeling like I want it to look just how I want it to look all the time. Um, but it is exciting. Like all, all the physical material with the exception of the pajamas are, are movable. You know, the bread is very hard now. Um, and that's, that is interesting that like we're, these things are, are stand-ins for feelings about intimacy and relationships between people and they're, they're alive, they're changing. That feels relevant for me also. This seems like maybe a beautiful time to open us up for questions. So if anybody has um, uh, a, a question for Leah or Nick, um, please feel free to drop it in the chat, unmute yourself, say hello. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm Ruby. I'm wondering if I saw the piece last week, and what really interested me was the piece when Leah was just lying on the couch by herself. Mm. And that felt like a moment of difference because so much of it is about intimacy and like collaboration and partnership. So I wonder if you can elaborate on that moment. Yeah, totally. Um, I actually made that piece early on in in the Inside Times in like April. I'm sorry, I, I don't know what else to call it. Um, I was thinking a lot about celebration and kind of like the the lost celebrations of this year. Um, so in in a way, it's very much a COVID piece. Um, but. Yeah, celebration, I, I, I call that piece celebration is vital to survival because I feel like uh, we need that. I need, I need that balloon and balloons kind of represent that 
a certain kind of gathering um, that you can't do alone. Uh, so that, that piece kind of started the, the whole balloon trend and thinking about celebration, the intimacy also of, of social, socialness um, and the alienation of being alone. Could I tack on to that also? Please, yeah. I think there's also, for, for me in that piece, there's a question of scale. Like we were just talking about, like we're working in this big time. Um, for me, that piece fits in, in very much the same way, but it's a larger distance. Like you don't actually see the other that is maybe being moved towards. There's mm -hmm. like the kind of evocation of a celebration, but you mm -hmm. don't see the other that is like longed for maybe in that piece or yeah. the context that's longed for. Um, yeah, that that's its own kind of connection or that intimacy is also lack. Yeah, it's like if in the bread piece, like one of us was there and the other one was like a mile away and like walking there, you know. Um, that's kind of cool. That's that's my hot take. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ruby. Intimacy is also lack. That's amazing. <laughs> Hi, could we jump in with a question? Please do. Yeah, hi. Hi, Courtney and Chris. hi, guys. Hi. Um, I just want to say that I visited the show uh, maybe like a week or so ago, and it was a great time. Um, but for me, it hasn't really come up in the convo yet, but I found the bread to just be so funny. It was like an IRL meme to me. <laughs> but I mean, it had come full circle because I think there was this time or in the inside time, so much of us have been like seeing what each other are making or doing via like recipes or whatever. So I just thought it was like quite a clever, you know, I arrive at the gallery and there are these like um, windows that feel like screens to me. And it looks the way that I feel like I've been looking into people's lives. Of like, oh, you're making bread now too. So I would just love to hear you talk about how this show feels in relation to like the virtual of all of our hangs. And then similarly, I think that there's something going on in the videos that I saw where there's kind of this like underbelly or like discord or like a little bit of tension, I think in the intimacy, which I think is like, it's the opposite. That's what I'm not seeing on people's like social medias, right? But it's occurring because we're all in this like wild proximity. So I guess I just feel like there's something about the, the show that's funny about like quoting what we see, but it's also so like pointing towards what we don't. So I would just love to hear you guys talk about. That's a really, yeah. that's a good question. I, um, thank you, Courtney. I think like, it's, it is really interesting to think about, like, this is a piece that we've been thinking about off and on for like two years. Um, and it's been so interesting to see like how it's been framed by the events of the last year. Um, uh, it feels like making art in 2020 is just like a different thing for sure. I love this analog of like the gallery to the screen. And I think this is like an added dimension of like, um, there was a lovely review in 60 Inches from Center where they talk a lot about voyeurism, right? Like there is this distance between the performer, between the time of recording, physically between the audience member and the gallery. Like they can't even go into the gallery to interact with the work, you know? Um, again, like to kind of maybe uh, reprise some of the thoughts from earlier, um, you know, I think there, I think there is something about really like laying bare that tension, you know, and I think like, I'm glad that there are things in the show that seem funny too, because I, I actually think the bread piece for all of its grossness is like pretty funny to watch. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I think like, again, that kind of complexity or that tangle or like all of those, the multi-directionality of those things is like really a, a primary part of like what we were trying to express. I don't know if I've adequately gotten at the virtuality piece of it. Um. Yeah, I think that for me, the experience of it is very is very not virtual. Um, it's like deeply physical, but that's me as a performer. And I think that it's it's interesting that there's a tension between what it what it looks like and 
what, what your experience is it, of it and, and what mine is. Um, yeah, the tension is interesting because I feel like the, we're trying to express the, the multi-dimensionality of it. And that is a, it's a sort of a cat's cradle, like. Yeah, like it's when the you, string when you, thing, right? Yeah, like there's tension involved in all, in all of it. It like, you have to hold one end and the other end and that's just how it is. And I, I love that that's visible. I just want to say that I really like the part when I'm watching the bread being made. And I mean, I guess like that sort of is this like trifecta <laughs> sort of like there's the the awesome and uh, like disturbing intimacy of the loaf being eaten. And then there's like this, the loneliness and then there's this like kitchen happening and like, I don't know, it's just sort of like the thing that sort of like, kind of like sets it back in the loop for me and like keeps it all going. So mm -hmm. I just think that there's like a really nice uh, cycle that's happening there. Hmm. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of cooking together so we didn't really have to practice that video much. <laughs> yeah, I, that also like, it's maybe worth noting that that was the last video that we made. Right, I'm not making that up. That's the last. You're video. not making that up. Okay, that was the last video that we made. So I feel like there was there was a feeling in that video of like, what does the show need still? You know, and that's mm -hmm. like that's the only video where these these kind of like objects all intersect in this very direct way. Um, so I like that idea of it, like yeah, it kicking back this cycle. You know, it like really is that that is a moment in the piece that feels very like. Um, I don't know, it's like strata or it's like generative or it's like all, all of the things are all of a sudden like interacting and then are kind of like pulled out of that loaf into these different performances and different objects or something. Mm -mm. So. Stretto. Stretto. <laughs> we maybe have time for one more question. I have a question if no one else is gonna go, but I'm gonna give it five, 10 seconds. <laughs> Just unmuting right now. Nice. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna ask. Um, <clears throat> so I think some of, something that's interesting about the project is like, certain elements have a lot of prescience with what has just happened in the world. Like mm -hmm. distance has a lot more currency in our language uh, now than when you brought this idea to Roman Susan. Like this was what you were working on and then it became really on the nose of things. Um, and uh, like Courtney was saying, bread is sort of this IRL uh, Twitter joke now, like sourdough everywhere. And so you have that going on too. Uh, and then the exhibition opened three days after the election when it was not called in any way. And you had all these red and blue balloons in the space <laughs> that then half <laughs> deflated themselves within a day or two. And so all of those elements together, like have this pull between appetite and exhaustion and intimacy and I was just wondering you like set these things in motion and then the momentum of the world gives them a different weight how did you did you think about altering that or did it play into the work you made while things were locked down that's my question we had such a conversation about changing the color of the balloons we were like, oh, should they be like purple and green? Or like, should they, ah, what do we yeah. do? Like, it wasn't something that I could think of. It wasn't something that we thought about until it was like, oh shit, the election. I was so afraid that someone was gonna stop me on the street. Cause I had this big thing of like a red, a red bouquet of balloons and a blue bouquet. And I was so afraid that someone was gonna think that I was doing some kind of like gender reveal <laughs> country. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, Anyway, nobody stopped me. It was fine. Um, um, it, sorry, I keep. Well, going. I I do. 
No, I, I'm going to formulate my thought. So okay. talk. Um, I'm going to wing it. Um, I think, you know, again, yeah, this was a, this was a, pro a work that has kind of been in process off and on for two years. And, um, you know, it was supposed to even happen back in March um, at Roman and Susan, and then things happened and the world was turned upside down. And um, I think, I think my, my perception of like, um, how the work has been read um, and what the work even means to me is that like, yeah, like the idea of distance has a lot more currency, it has a lot more usage. Uh, it, it like, it is impossible for me to imagine doing any of those performances with anybody but Leah or my other roommates, you know, like um, uh, that would be like terrifying, you know? Um, I also think there's this part of the work that has really been, I think the touching parts of the work or the longing parts of the work are like really on the surface now, which is interesting. And I think maybe even like wonderful. Um, you know, the, the unfortunate coinciding of like red and blue balloons with like this fucked up political system, um, political party, like, you know, that, that kind of is what it is. And at the end, we made a judgment call and decided that we wanted the videos and the, and the objects in the gallery to be consistent. Um, but I do, I do think in a lot of ways, like, yeah, the, the work is like on the nose, as you say, but I, I think it's also like maybe highlights highlights some elements of the experience or like the work hasn't been totally reframed. It's maybe like other things have bubbled up, if that makes sense, um, in a way that I think is positive, in a way that I think is, has supported the work. I'm not, I'm still not totally sure how to say this, but I asked Nick the other day uh, if they think that this piece, these, this group of pieces is about our relationship. Um, and you said something really interesting. You were like, it's not about our relationship, but every work of art that two people make is about whatever synergy exists there, um, which I think is true. And I think that I'm always curious about like other people's relationships, not, not just romantic relationships, but in general, like how, how do people exist together in, in the world? Because it seems like it's different every time. And it feels like right now my life consists only of those individual relationships. So it is interesting to make, yeah, to make work about that, like the synergy between two people and two people only. So I think the, the relevance of it has to do with that and maybe not just mm -hmm. about, I'm, I'm not sure yeah. if I'm being clear, but. Yeah, yeah, there's no party scene in the piece, you know, there's yeah. no like at the crowded coffee shop. Yeah. Yeah, so it's about that and that always exists, but now, now that only exists mm -hmm. really is what I'm trying to say. That's that was that's so beautiful. What a like a what a what a beautiful little note to end on. <laughs> um, uh, thank you all so much for coming. Um, I think like, thank you. It really means yeah. a lot to be able to talk about this work. I really super duper quickly before sick wrap up ceremony. Um, uh, we have like an email address that's on the Roman Susan site. It's just measures of distance at gmail.com. If you have other feedback or other thoughts, or you had a question or you're like, this show sucks. Like, please feel free to email <laughs> us there. Um, in the absence of like an opening and closing performance, like it's just great to connect with people about the work. And it, it, yeah, again, it means a lot that everyone's here tonight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Corey, for uh, <clears throat> MCing this situation. I'm going to turn the recording off now if